buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. And I'm currently in the dark. So stand by while I turn these lights on. Hey, there we go. Perfect timing. It is, uh, it's Monday on the show, and you know what that means. We have a, a lot to talk about here today, because not only is it Monday, but it is also the beginning of WrestleMania week. And, uh, boy, is there a lot going on. In an hour, two hours actually, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, I will be joined by Filthy Tom Lawler for our weekly show. And what we are going to do is try to preview... Everything major that is going on this weekend. And there are a lot of different shows other than WrestleMania. And probably on Tuesday, I will talk about the plan that we have for this coming weekend. Because I am not going to WrestleMania. I will be here. And my family will be gone. They are heading out for spring break on Friday. I will head out to meet them after WrestleMania on Monday. But that means I'm home all weekend, and I have nothing to do but watch 5 million wrestling shows. And so we have a lot that we will be watching and covering this WrestleMania weekend. So we will tell you all about that and all of the rest of the news, including the latest in the Vince McMahon, Janelle Grant story. New York Post today wrote about an alleged love letter that she sent to Vince McMahon. And we'll tell you what Grant's lawyer says about this and uh, and a lot more. So uh, a lot to get into here today. Mike Sempervivi joins us after the break. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Tony Storm joined by Mariah May and Luther. The panic is over. I'm here. Hello, beautiful. Oh, great to see you. Mr. Khan. Great to see you, I'm Jim. getting all tangled. I can't do this. Yes. Luther. Luther, You're right? I'm stuck. This is great. It's Just perfect. Fantastic. I know. It is so nice to see you. It's great to see you, champ. So proud of you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. I can't remember the reason why, but I am. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. You know what? We should start these a little later and go on even longer. Oh. And that way we can all have breakfast. <laughs> That's what great. Do you Sounds great. I have an 8 a.m. in Palm Beach, so I'm gonna. It's gonna be a long one, but we're good. Tony Storm, congratulations on retaining your title tonight. How how are you feeling after this match with Deanna Perrazzo? Shit, Renee, if you must know. But let's get to the important business. So, since all your questions often amount often amount to a fair amount of yellow communist journalism, I have prepared a statement of my own. That way, you won't have to announce which website. You work for us like a point of pride, so. (coughs) Excuse me. Good evening. I am still your AEW Women's World Champion. But I couldn't have done it without the following people. Thank you to the city of Greensboro for keeping the riffraff out of the hotel lobby. Best wishes and happy retirement to Sting Seems like just yesterday we started on this journey together. Feel free to use my summer house in Martha's Vineyard. I would like to thank my protege, Mariah May, for capturing the unpolished beauty of my youth. I see something in you. I don't know what it is, but I do. I am giving you full access to my old storage unit. Help yourself. Ah, uh, of course, uh, to my trusted servant, servant Luther. Yes, um, I'll have a salmon nori roll, carbonated water, and Pepto Bismol. Right away, madame. Thank you, dear. <sighs> Thank you to official Aubrey Edwards for making the right decision. But next time, please wear mild perfume, if you could. I have a bit of a headache. I would like to thank the commentators, Mr. Tasmaniac and Sean Excalibur Mooney for their usual East Coast, West Coast analytical banter. Ah, and the utmost respect for my opponent and former friend, Diana Perrazzo. A great showing, a great showing. You took me to the limit. You brought out the best in me and blah, 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 blah. I hope you go back to impact. 
<laughs> I tell you what, my arms are killing me. I don't know how I'm going to do my usual debauchery tonight. I am going to have to open that gift bag that Karen Jarrett got for me. If you understand what I mean. Mike in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, looks like I'll be listening to that CM Punk interview on Ariel Helwani's show later today. Man, they're already about it in the chat, aren't they? I was just reading. I didn't, I didn't look at the chat. I was reading uh, what people were saying on the board. And uh, I'll listen to it later. He's good on podcasts. Won't make any comments about anything right now. Because I don't even know what to make a comment about. All right. Obviously, the big story here today, this from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. The lawyer representing Janelle Grant says Grant was coerced into writing, quote, a love letter to Vince McMahon in late 2021. New York Post published an article on Monday containing a lengthy email Grant wrote to McMahon on December 24, 2021, in which she professes her love for WWE's former executive chairman. Grant's lawyer, Ann Callis, said McMahon instructed Grant to write the letter, which was obtained from Grant's laptop as part of WWE's investigation into allegations against McMahon. It is expected to appear in future court filings as Grant's lawsuit against McMahon and WWE proceeds. Frankly, Ann Callis said, this is the lawyer of Grant, frankly, it's it's pretty disgusting that Vince's weeks late attempt to defend his horrendous behavior, behavior he claims to this day never happened, is to try to showcase letters that Vince himself coerced her to write. His psychological torture of her continues, as is typical with abusive predators who respond to women speaking out with increased threats. While Janelle isn't a stranger to his intimidation tactics, this is a new low even for him. Callis noted, much of Grant's letter to McMahon was plagiarized. For instance... Grant uh, Grant wrote to McMahon, I feel understood, accepted, loved, and appreciated for who I am at my core. You see my heart. You see my soul. There are few people who know the secret of making a heaven here on earth. You are one of those rare people. Lines taken verbatim from the 1947 film The Bishop's Wife. Another part of the letter was taken from a 2021 GQ interview with Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. What? McMahon's lawyer, Jessica... And this is another thing here. This is what we learned today. Are you ready for this? Yes. Vince McMahon's lawyer is Jessica Tob Rosenberg of Kasowich Benson Torres. Who are they, you ask? This is the same firm that represented MLW in its 2023 antitrust lawsuit against WWE. Which, of course, was settled, and uh, MLW ended up with uh, whatever they ended up with. $20 million or whatever it ended up being. Vince's lawyer is from the firm that represented MLW against WWE. And then uh, Vince's lawyer says, No one coerced Ms. Grant to write that letter. She wrote it of her own accord. The fact the letter shows it was the 24th draft... Speaks volumes, which I'm actually not. Sh- I, I, I'm not it's baffling. Sh- well, she began the letter. If you want to read the whole letter, it's on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. I'm not going to read it here, but she begins the letter saying this is draft 24. So I don't know if they're just saying it's draft 24 because that's what she wrote, or if they have some way of determining it was actually the 24th draft that she wrote. But uh, it says no one in her, uh, nowhere in her voluminous complaint that is replete with fabrications this is vince's lawyer does she mention being coerced into such behavior the language of the letter is consistent with other communications she made to mr mcmahon over the course of their consensual relationship and again if you want to uh read this letter which is so long uh, you're welcome to do so it's even described as a rambling 2200 word letter 
I, you know, 68 days after the initial story comes out. It's interesting timing with what the WWE PR machine put out today about ratings as they kick off their WrestleMania week. I don't know if Vince's lawyer is flexing in the way that she thinks is... I guess she's flexing in a way that she thinks is beneficial by saying that it's the 24th draft that speaks volumes. I don't know what that speaks volumes of. If what does that have to do these, with anything? Yeah, if she's writing these letters at you know his request to the point where she's actually just lifting things completely out of other articles because he just wants to have his letter. Um, you know, it's just... It's something. It's something else. That's for sure. I uh, again, this is now the second time too that should be pointed out that Nick Khan has been said to know about this relationship. Now, granted, they both come from Janelle Grant, but this is now Janelle Grant. You know, I don't care who knows about. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the I read the entire letter, okay, Mm -hmm. and these are the names that she wrote in the letter. And I guess one of them could have been a misspelling, but she says, even though so few people know about us, the most freeing feeling this year came when we got to act like a couple openly, freely, when Mickey, Paul, and the chef were around us. So nowhere is Nick Khan mentioned in here, but Paul would likely be, well, I shouldn't even say that because we don't know. But people have been presuming that must be... I mean, it could be... Actually, there are multiple Pauls in the company. It could be Triple H. could be Paul Heyman. Well, that's... I don't know who Mickey is, and I certainly don't know who this chef is. But that's not true, because it it goes on to say whether it's your assistants, a chef, Brad, Nick, Johnny, or whoever sees us together, I think it's undeniable to them or anyone who sees us that we are in love with... Actually, you may be right. I may have That we are in love with a capital L, which is one of the things that she's accused or is is said that she has lifted directly from that GQ thing with Megyn Kelly and... And Machine Gun Kelly, I think, or whatever her name, Megan uh, Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. I think that in copying Although and pasting, Megan Kelly and Machine Gun Kelly together—that's a story. Actually, this may be an issue with the front page of WrestlingObserver.com because the letter on the front page ends with "It must be intoxicating," with no other, uh, and not even a period there. So presumably, there's more of the letter I have not read. Uh, so if you're listening to this and you're an editor at the front page of the website. Uh, you might want to put the rest of the letter in. So what does it say? What names does it say after that? Uh, again, at one point in this long thing, it says, uh, whether it's your assistants, a chef, Brad, Nick, Johnny, or whoever sees us together, I think it's undeniable to them or anyone who sees us that we are in love with a capital L. Others who think they know you so well must be surprised when they see us act so sweetly together, practically like kids. Where is this entire letter? I may have to go to the post. Well, we'll then, follow that up after the break. Well, yeah, and there is. But yes, I'm, I presume that's post. in there if you've read that. Yeah, that's in the New York Post. And even there, if you go to the New York Post site, it's got a kind of a slideshow for it, which goes seven pictures. So that shows you how long this letter is. Why is this so difficult? Because it's Monday. Well, it's just, I mean. Yeah. So you didn't have lights? It's just. So you're starting WrestleMania week, brother. Come on. Well, regardless, this is this is the latest in the story. We'll have more on this after the break. But if you have comments, you can text us 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Uh, the only other thing I could add is uh, the story is apparently there was another uh, communication where uh, she, I think it was on the 21st, somewhere around there, she got surgery on her finger. And so uh, she sent Vince a text basically saying, you know, how am I going to do this with the finger? How am I going to write your letter? And so, you know, her side is saying, well, that right there is proof that Vince told her to uh, write this letter to him. And uh, yes, whether it's your assistant, a chef. So we still don't know who this chef is. Brad, Nick, Johnny, or whoever sees us together. I think it's undeniable to them or anyone who sees us. We are in love with a capital L.
Well, Vince ain't making pancakes, so it's probably safe to assume, even though we do not know that it's his personal chef. And in this text message that she sent him, which the Janelle Grant side did not put out, but has said, yes, it did come from Vince. Uh, she does say, how will I write your letter? I can type it and read it or try to write it in a couple of days. I'm so sorry if I messed this up. I want you to have a nice letter. Back in a moment with more, everybody. Observer Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm excellent, Brene. I'm you excellent. Bet. Yep. Uh, very excited that you're able to join us here tonight. Congratulations on retaining the AEW World Championship in such an incredible match with Hangman Adam Page, Swerve Strickland. You guys beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. Should I ask you if you're even remotely surprised that you are still our champion tonight? Not at all. Um, you know, I've always made it a, a point to, uh, you know, tell the world what I'm going to do. And I think that I've delivered uh, on every uh, promise that I've made here in AEW. Uh, and tonight was no different. You know, obviously, Swerve and Hangman, two tremendous young competitors. But they just didn't have enough. And I'm just that much better. So here I am, the champion. All right, guys, the floor is open to you guys. Any uh, questions you guys have for Samoa Joe? It's all you. I'll take the first one right here, Joe. Thank you for your time, Joe. My name is Jonathan McClarty from FlagshipNews.com and MilitaryNews.com. Uh, congratulations on your victory tonight. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, you know, with Hangman and Swerve beefing with each other for so long, do you think that served as a distraction to, to further help you to retain tonight? Well, you know, first off, I want to thank your readers for their service. Secondly, um, you know, it was a huge mistake by both those gentlemen. I mean, obviously, they have very, very bad blood between each other. So, you know, these uh, heated issues can often boil over into other parts of their life. Unfortunately, it boiled over into tonight, which is the worst place for it to happen. So, I mean, if uh, those gentlemen want to stay uh, eyes locked on each other, they thought that the path to salvation was through uh, each other's blood. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't because uh, I made sure that did not happen tonight. So, that's what I feel. Here we go on the front. Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio. So you talked earlier a couple of weeks ago about bringing back the ranking system as a way to get the best opponents for the AEW World Championship. Today we saw an amazing match, one that you were a part of, and also Will Ospreay and Takeshita. What are your thoughts on the growing, strong talent pool in All Elite Wrestling and what it means to be world champion during this time with so much talent. I mean, roster. it's indicative of what AEW has always stood for. You know, we go out, we find the best wrestlers in the world, and we bring them together to find out who is the best wrestler in the world. Currently, that is me. But on my heels are some of the greatest grapplers to ever step foot in a ring. You know, when we have acquisitions, men like Will Ospreay, how can you not be excited about the future of this company? And, uh, you know, once again, we've set up a protocol. Will Osprey is new here. He's a fantastic, dynamic athlete, has had tremendous success everywhere he's been. But until he has that success here, I don't need to worry about him. Show Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. This punk interview. Mm. Apparently, we'll be talking about that tomorrow. But, uh, you know, it's You'll funny. be talking about it tonight, that's for sure. You know, what's funny is, uh, you know, I, I've read, uh, I haven't heard it from him, so I'll say limited things. But I've read the recaps of what he said, and it's uh, it's pretty funny how uh, nothing he said contradicts anything that we reported at any time about any of this. So, about that. How about Maybe that? Maybe that's uh, that part of it is stuck in an NDA somewhere in Jacksonville. Hmm. 
So tonight is Raw, and they have tough competition. And as a result, my absolute most hated thing on earth. First hour of Raw, commercial free. Wow. Oh. So, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. But it is completely sold out, and they've got a big lineup for tonight, including uh, The Rock and Roman Reigns are going to be appearing on the show. In Brooklyn. So whatever the show does, it is going to do as good as it could possibly do. Yeah. We can we can say well, that. Well, that's not true. Well, it's yes, going to be as good as it as can it possibly could possibly be. do. It could be yes. better if those damn basketball games. If they didn't have these play. these ball players head to head, we've also got DIY versus New Day versus Judgment Day, in an eight man tag. Let me start over again. These eight man tags mess me up every time. <laughs> DIY and the New Day against all of the Judgment Day eight man tag. We got Candice and Indy versus Ivy and Maxine, and Sami Zayn will be facing Bronson Reed. Hmm. Which is a rematch. I so Bronson Reed beat Sammy last week, and I thought, well, you know, the obvious is, you know, Sammy's going to beat Gunther, and then Bronson will be one of his first challengers. Yeah, see, and, I got uh, worried. Maybe not. Yeah. Sammy may should be beating him tonight. That's well, that. well, I uh, look. I'd like to see that, but remember, Chad Gable was there giving advice to Sammy Zayn. I don't think they'll do this. I hope they don't do this. They're not going to turn this into a four way, are they? I think that that would uh, be a bad idea. Insane. But you know what would be good? I, I can tell you that from what I understand, that is not the plan. You know, And a good plans plan, though, can if... change, but right now it's a singles match. Sami Zayn defending that title in Montreal against Chad Gable and Bronson Reed. Well, they've also, uh, I mean, the other thing is they've announced the participants in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And uh, Bronson is in there, as is uh. Chad Gable. So I don't think they're turning this into a four-way. It's it's and it is scheduled at this point to be a singles match at WrestleMania. And then we've got uh, Stand and Deliver Go Home Show tomorrow, which is Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows versus Zach Seaman, Nathan Frazier versus Joaquin Wilde and Cruz Del Toro. Carmelo and Trick have their final face-off. Lyra and Roxanne in Supernova Sessions. Sol Ruka versus Blair Davenport and Fallon Henley versus J.C. Jane. Wednesday, we have got Dynamite in Worcester. Is that correct? Worcester. 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 Worcester, Massachusetts, <laughs> with Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland in a contract signing. And you know, as much as people talk about how there's too many contract signings, the fact of the matter is, AW doesn't do a lot of contract signings. There are a million contract signings, and so when you hear that there's going to be a contract signing on this uh, AW show, it's like, oh my god, another one? But they actually don't do it very often. As long as somebody goes through a table, that's all we need. And that shows at uh, 2773 at this point, this Dynamite on uh, Wednesday. We have the Young Bucks versus Best Friends. Semi-final match, AEW Tag Team Title Tournament. Mariah May versus Thunder Rosa in a number one contenders match. Will Ospreay versus Powerhouse Hobbs in the Battle of Wills. Mm-hmm. Billy Gunn versus Jay White. <laughs> and did you see Rampage? I, I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. And Chris Jericho will call out Hook. You know, watching uh, watching Rampage, I mean, I don't want to go on a big thing, but... There's a reason that AEW was on fire in 2019 and 2020 and WWE was having double digit declines and that was because WWE sucked and AEW was a far superior alternative. And fact of the matter is you if you are number 2 and you're trying to beat number 1, number 1 it's hard no matter what. But number two, you got to be better than them in virtually every single way. And, you know, two weeks ago on SmackDown, we saw a home invasion storyline with AJ Styles and LA Knight. And then we saw this one with the Ass Boys. Like, literally, they got into the house by using the garage door opener because they're his sons. It's not a crime if it's family. And then they walked into the house. And you could see that, like, Billy Gunn, or maybe his wife, or maybe both of them, were like, do not destroy anything. And so they got to knock an empty milk jug off the counter. 
And then they, you know, acted like they were going to destroy the TV. Which, by the way, you can go to Costco and get a TV that big for like $140. And no, they did not allow them to even bring in a fake TV to destroy. And then Billy showed up and they left. And it was like, the WWE version was a billion times better. A wasn't there billion times better? Wasn't there also what is it the the dynamite from the week before or from a couple days before playing on the TV even though nobody was in the house at first? Oh well, hey, I mean if Billy was on it, maybe he wanted to watch it in a loop. I can and, understand you know, that. And maybe they were sitting outside and are completely deaf and didn't hear any of this going on before they stepped back through the front door. But uh, look, most of the time, and there's an exception to every rule, funny doesn't make money. Levity does. In serious situations, the levity of some, hey, The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin and singing back and forth to each other before WrestleMania 18 or whatever it was, that was funny. But it was also involved in something that was really heated. This was just a throwaway. And at least when it came to LA Knight and AJ Styles, we got a little bit of a different spin. Even if you thought it was stupid, we got body cam footage from cops, supposedly, and we got more of a story. Yeah, it was extremely well done. And so, again, Jay White, I don't know. Seems like you could be doing something better than this, but Billy Gunn against Jay White in 2024. Here we go. Point is, Tony needs to sit down, probably with some other smart people, because they got plenty of smart people working there, let me tell you, and figure out what can we do better than WWE and focus on trying to do that. And, you know, storylines are subjective, but, you know, Paul won Best Booker, Tony didn't. And WWE storylines are clicking in a big-time way. Like, everyone's like, well, you know, it's not going to matter because it's WrestleMania season. They can't... Yeah, it is hard during Mania season, but part of the reason it's hard is because they're peaking. Like, fans are into all of these storylines leading into WrestleMania. They're into all of these characters. They're into all of these matches. So it's not just Mania season. It's like everything is peaking right now because of the work they've done for the last year. And guess what? Not only are they peaking with that lawn they have, once they step off that lawn after WrestleMania, they have so much that has been fertilized, and that grass is looking real lush and green right now, unlike mine outside. It's looking really good because you have Braun Breaker coming up, Carmelo Hayes coming up, Tiffany Stratton, who has already gotten over to a certain extent and you've done nothing with. Jade, you just debuted. What about Damian Priest in the briefcase? Drew McIntyre, you start going down the line of things and you may not like everybody, you may not like all the storylines now, but look what they're set up for. What if Gunther loses that Intercontinental title? Just by doing that, he's in the world title picture and he's somebody else that people believe in because of how you've treated him and how he's been portrayed this whole time. So a lot of it has to do with long distance. In, and I don't want to hear this stuff that Tony books long distance he's got his ideas whatever okay he doesn't have it for the balance of the proceedings and that shows itself constantly in that company as opposed to what wwe is doing right now for good or for bad whether you like it or not well wwe sent out a press release touting their success and uh if you think that this is going to be the only thing coming out over the next week think again brother they're going to be they're going to be letting you know everything the uh Quarter 1, 2024, SmackDown averaging 892,000 viewers in 18 to 49, up 15% year over year. They're ranked number one, persons 18 to 49, across all total day Friday broadcasts, 11 of the first 12 weeks of the quarter. February 16th episode, 985,000 viewers in 18 to 49, making it the most viewed program on all of television. For the entire week, February 12, quarter one, 2024, Raw, 733,000 in 18 to 49, up 6% year over year. Number one in 18 to 49, nine of the 13 weeks of the quarter. NXT, up 31% in 18 to 49, year over year. SmackDown and total viewers up 3%. And uh, Raw down 7%, total viewers, NXT up 7%. In total viewers. Obviously, a lot of this has to do with the return of The Rock 
And you know, it's funny. You know, I, I can't remember what number we were at at YouTube, but like we were stuck there for seemingly months. And then The Rock showed up and it went. Psh! And the same thing happened with WWE. They had a they had a date when they expected to break 100 million subscribers. And they uh, they got there well in advance, thanks to the return of The Rock. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Hey there, Joe. Rick Uchino, CagesideSeats.com. Congratulations on a great performance tonight. Just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, your new number one contender uh, in Wardlow and the words he had this week where he said he was coming for your spot. Yeah, uh, and, and much like everybody else in this in this entire roster, I mean, it's no it's no surprise Wardlow finds himself where he is. Obviously, a very domineering individual that has had tremendous success, admittedly even against me. But uh, right now, this is a very different version of myself. This is not one that is distracted by other championship titles. I'm the AEW World Champion, and Wardlow will look, will, will soon learn why that is. Hey, Joe, uh, DJ Danny Ocean, 101.9 KISS FM. Um, you mentioned Will Ospreay. We talked about Wardlow. Uh, is there any of these new up-and-coming guys or you got your eye that you want to get in the ring with yourself that you want to defend your title against? You know, once again, I, I refer back to championship protocol. I mean, they have to earn this spot. I mean, uh, this is not me up here picking out dream matches, trying to be nice about this. No, this is me uh, supporting the integrity of the championship that only the best grapplers in the world will compete for it. So, uh, you know, is, is there a, a laundry list of wrestlers I'd be more than happy to take on in the ring? Yeah, every single one of them. And you look up and down our roster, you tell me one person that isn't a dream match. I know what this company is capable of. I know about the competitors in this company. And I am more than happy to prove each and every one of them that they're second tier and they're just not on my level. Hey, Joe. Uh, Swerve made light of the uh, announcing in a poncho situation. Was there ever a time in your life that you doubted that you would be back here where you are in this position? No, because obviously I was planning and taking the time to recover so that I could be back here at this capacity competing at this level. You know, far too, too many uh, uh, dumber athletes in this industry uh, don't take the time to heal. You know, don't bet on themselves and say, hey, listen, I'm going to step away from, from things a little bit and I'm going to come back um, uh, not 90 percent, not 80 percent, 110 percent. And I took that time, and I came back 110%. Now I'm AEW world champion. So, I mean, th this is just indicative of me understanding what I need to do to get things done. You know, I'm, I'm playing this on a very different level than everybody else. Everybody else out here just hoping they get their shot, hoping they're doing things. I'm planning dynasties. And, I mean, it starts with, it starts with me. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Bro. I mean, they're, they're playing chess. They're, they're playing checkers. I'm out here playing chess. I mean, this is, it's a totally different game, man. And, uh, you know, that, that, that time, I mean, she... Doing commentary and punches, I, I'm still a millionaire. You know, I know what he's talking about. You know, so I mean, he, he may not like that issue, but hey, that that guy on the punch just whipped his ass tonight and is still world champion. So I mean, you, you tell me, you tell me who's running things around here. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. You know what I was not expecting today? What's that? I was not expecting to uh, to read the chat and come to the defense of CM Punk. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Jingu. Uh, I haven't even read the board. Oh. So, um, or the chat. I will say this. We, I, I haven't heard what he said, but I'm responding to people who are talking about CM Punk. And that is, you know, someone on the board was like, why Why in the hell is this guy acting like such a tough guy? Did no one see his UFC career? Oh, and oh. well, li listen, I'm a I'm a black belt, guys. Okay. In defense of CM Punk, guy got waxed in the UFC against trained MMA fighters. Okay, so that doesn't mean that if you put CM Punk out there with an untrained person. He couldn't wipe the floor with them. Guy got legit training. I don't know if he still trains today, but, like, he paid money. 
He paid a lot of money to Duke get Rufus. legit training with legit guys, okay? Did the level – I mean, he had no wrestling background. He had no stand-up background. No, he had no hands. Did, sure. did that legit background allow him to walk into UFC and beat guys? No, of course not. You think I walk? You think I could walk into UFC tomorrow and start winning a bunch of fights? No. But you, CM Punk, put him on the mat with someone with no training, and he'll probably wipe the floor with them. Not all of them, you know. Put him in with a great wrestler, he'd probably have some problems or, you know, whatever. But to to bury to say that CM Punk cannot possibly have any fighting ability whatsoever or any ability to handle somebody because he got killed in a UFC fight against UFC fighters, I don't know what to tell you. So no. How in the world did that happen on this show? What do you mean? Just that. You know how it happened. Do I still train B? Oh, my God. I'm appalled. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. Who would you take in a fight? Duke Rufus or Pedro Sauer? Well, Pedro is in his 60s, and he's had about 95 shoulder surgeries. Well, so, Rufus uh, is getting up there, too, now. I'm not. Defend I your would, man. I would, well, of course it would be Your Pedro. sensei. Are you kidding me? I remember I uh, I went to a, a seminar. This would have been in uh, in 2010 or so, and he was doing a a black belt test. This guy was a brown belt. He was going to get his black belt, and I think Pedro would have been like uh, 54, and and this guy was probably, I mean, actually I can tell you exactly how old he was because he was born. He was one year younger than me, born on the day before I was. So he would have been uh, 37. No, younger, because it was 2010. He would have been like 33. Okay? Pedro was like 52 or 53 or something like that. And so after he did his uh, his deal, he got a chance to roll with Pedro. Pedro ruined this dude. He (laughs) tapped this guy like right and left. And the funny thing was, he wasn't even, like, he may have been sleeping. I say, was he even warmed up? I mean, my, no, he wasn't. He was sitting there watching this guy go through the Elio Gracie self-defense and the text, and then he walked over to the mat and just armbar, armbar, choke, like half speed, half asleep. I was like, my God, look at that guy. And speaking of my God, look at that guy, the great O'Conn. <laughs> How's that for a segue? Did you see that picture? Oh my goodness! Oh, it happens. Listen, even though they 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 lied, false advertising, Brian. What happened? They didn't eat the eel. What? They ate dumplings. It must have been eel dumplings. Are you sure? Those things are usually made with pork over there. Oh, I guess yeah. They did the replace the eel. That sucks. Yeah. Well, anyway, you know, I don't like to. Uh, I I I'm a man who will admit when I'm wrong. Okay, I did earlier in this show when I didn't have the whole letter, and then you had the whole letter. I was wrong. But I will not admit I am wrong here. I had a way better finish. Okay? My finish was they do the first match, and Tangaloa gets the most covers, and then they do the second fall, and Great Okan eats the most eel, and then they go to the hit the corners gimmick strap match strap match and the finish should have been tangalo hits one corner great okan falls by and hits the same corner tangalo hits the second corner great okan hits the second corner tangalo hits a third corner great okan hits that third corner but as tangalo goes for the fourth corner he slips on the eel great okan hits the fourth corner i told this to dave you know what dave says he goes that's just too wacky. <laughs> I was like, brother, what? it's a rural revitalization match involving all you can eat eel. And you're worried that my finish is too wacky? And then, hey, what did they do? Well, the third fall, they're doing a strap match. They're acting like they could both barf at any moment. Yeah. But my idea is too wacky? Get out of here. They had a fight for that title inside of a dog cage, for heaven's sakes. Come on. It's your boy Gato here. Come on. So a um, couple of notes from SmackDown and Collision. We won't talk about that uh, home invasion anymore. No. I'm going to tell you, and this is one of those things, everybody. You want to know why WWE is hot? Why? 
because you watch these shows. How many times, and you better be honest about this. What? For a decade, you and I did the show together, and you had the same talking point nearly every year. Mm -hmm. WrestleMania is going to come, and then we're going to have a lull because they'll have just done everything and they got nothing left. Okay? That is absolutely, positively not happening this year. No, sir. Because you watch all of these shows, and all they do is plant post-mania seeds. And this Legato Del Fantasma segment with the LWO, mm. dude, this was flat out awesome. So last week, they were doing Ray and, and Santos, and the gimmick was that he, nobody from either faction could be at ringside. Okay? So they do the match, and who should appear at ringside but Dominic in a Ray mask. He is not part of either faction, and he costs Ray the win. And, you know, at the time, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Well, like, what's going on here? So this week, Ray and, uh, and Santos come out, and first Santos calls out Dom. And he thanks him. You know, Dom is still angry at his father. He thanks him. And they actually, they actually hearkened back to stories years ago where Santos says, you know, when I first came here, we did not see eye to eye because they'd feuded. And Santos says, now I can say this to your face. You were right. And so, you know, Dom says, I'll still do anything in my power to make my deadbeat's dad's life a living hell. So out comes Ray and the LWO. And Ray's crew is in a line here. Santos crew in a line here. They're squaring off back and forth. Fans are going nuts. LWO chants and everything. So Ray cuts his promo. And he says, you know, I, I can't believe you're back, Dom. I can't believe I'm, I have to fight you again. But he goes, it's divine intervention. The two men I hate the most standing right in front of me right now. And he says, I challenge you two, me and a partner, against you two for a match at WrestleMania. And as soon as he says this, the fans start chanting for Carlito. And the camera zooms into Carlito, and he's got his big smile and his big hair. And he's like, oh, I can't wait to get my hands on these guys at WrestleMania. And so Dom says, well, which of these dorks are you going to choose to be your partner? And you get another quick shot of Carlito, and man, he's all ready. And Rey Mysterio says, well, it will be the newest member of the LWO. Carlito's like this. And Rey goes, Dragon Lee! And Carlito goes, And he still smiles, and he doesn't, like, pitch a fit. He doesn't do anything over the top. But you see his smile go from here to here. And now he's forcing a smile. And Dragon Lee comes out, and Carlito, like, he hugs him. Great to see you, brother. I mean, you guys are going to do great. And you can just tell this man is furious. But he's not selling it. Which is what you would do in real life. I thought Carlito, I listen, I'm not the biggest Carlito fan, never have been. This guy was awesome in was this cool. segment. And you know what's going to happen. And it probably isn't going to be at WrestleMania, but like they planted that seed, and man, this guy's going to be next. He's turning on poor Ray and Dragon Lee. Hey, man. And uh, I thought he was awesome. Awesome. Make Makes it even better if you want to do hair versus hair. Sure, Dominic losing would always be fun, but double masks with Ray and Dragon Lee against Carlito's hair and, and Santos's hair, which is getting long, by the way. And here's the thing, too. Whenever they decide to do that, depending on where Andrade is at in that moment in time, you would have five guys in Legato, and you would have four guys plus Andrade in the LWO with the women, Electra and Zelina there as well, too. 
it won't make it to Survivor Series, I, I wouldn't believe, because I think if you're going to do mask versus hair, SummerSlam would be the greatest opportunity to do that and get the most shine out of it. But at some point, if that happens, there is a possibility we could have a 10-man tag match with that group, and I love that idea if they gave them some time. So then the uh, main event segment, you know, I'd, I'd heard it. Oh, man, ah, why are they doing nothing with Jade? Blah. And I, I tried to explain to everybody, but it's one of those things where nobody wants to listen. They were going to do something with Jade. She was going to be in the elimination chamber, but due to visa issues, she couldn't be on the show. But she's ready to go. And what they did was the uh, Bianca Dakota main event, and uh, Bianca ends up hitting the KOD, referee counts the pin, damage control hits the ring. They start destroying Bianca. Naomi runs down. They start destroying her. And then they hit Jay's, uh, Jade's music. And boy, early in the show, she'd done an entrance and uh, announced her contract signing. And man, they gave her the big time superstar uh, entrance. And they hit her music here. The crowd goes nuts. You've never seen someone slowly saunter to the ring in a more slow, sauntering manner. <laughs> but man, she got in the ring. And I think it was. Uh, I think three things. I think Dakota ran at her first. Or no. Yeah, Dakota ran at her first. She got booted. And then Jade hit a pop up power bomb. I'm pretty sure on EO. Looked freaking awesome. And then she grabbed um Kyrie and hit her with the Jaded. And like everything she did looked great. Came off as a total superstar. And here she is inserted into the hottest women's program they have on on either show which is uh, uh, Damage Control versus Bailey's Crew. And it's a big match at Mania. So away we go. I got yeah. that all wrong, who she beat up. You know what? It doesn't matter. Those are the three matter. moves. It was a big boot, a pop-up powerbomb, and I'm sure she hit Kyrie with yes. the uh, the Jaded. And it doesn't. And you know what should also be said off of that, too? I thought the Bailey EO thing was really good because I like the way that they did EO's promo and then have Bailey attack her at the end kind of out of nowhere. I thought that actually came across really well, as too. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, I do want to talk about uh, the main event tonight with uh, Sting's final match. And I just wanted to kind of just get your thoughts on Sting's retirement. Obviously, you had a feud with him in, in TNA uh, over the TNA World Title. Had a couple great ma you know, great matches with him, and just kind of reflect a little bit about your history with Sting and what he means to this business and this company. You know, I've I've I've, I've known Sting as a rival, as a friend. Uh, you know, outside the ring as a confidant, somebody who has uh, been a steady and, and, and sobering voice during a lot of chaotic situations throughout my career. Uh, aside from that, for 40 years, Sting has elicited emotions from crowds around the world that, uh, you know, uh, uh, most wrestlers could only hope they would achieve. And I think that, uh, you know, tonight, how much love he received, how many people showed out for his final appearance, and, uh, you know, how much we here at AEW appreciate his contributions to this company. Um, to be a man like Sting, to have the legacy and the, and the legendary status that you do and still show up here and give that 110% and still try to build a new company and still give of himself physically and mentally at a very high level, um, you know, it, it, it speaks to his character, it speaks to who he is as a human being, and it speaks to the legacy that he deserves to be celebrated tonight. Two more questions? Uh, Scott Fishman, TV Insider. Um, you know, you being the AEW World Champion, you're seen as the leader, like a face of the company. What are your, what's, how would you kind of describe uh, the vibe right now backstage in the locker room and the working relationship that you all have? Um, it's been a turbulent couple months last year, but it seems like things are a little steady right now. So kind of how would you kind of describe the feeling that you have backstage? I, I think you summed it up perfectly. That was last year. And I mean, this is the AEW underneath my reign. And, uh, I, I, as far as uh, our, our locker room committee and stuff, I don't think it's ever been tighter. I don't think it's ever been better. Uh, there's a enthusiasm backstage that is infectious, and it's because 
you know, we have so much new uh, burgeoning talent. We have so many new opportunities to go out there and entertain the crowd with the people that we have uh, at our disposal that, um, you know, there's just, there's just genuine excitement among the locker room. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it's been a long time since uh, uh, the, this spirit has been felt here. And uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, you know, where this leads us in the future. Last question for Joe. All right, cowards, cool. All right, I'm good. <laughs> so now with Joe, our AEW world champion, everybody. Thank you so much for your time, Joe. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB, also WrestlingObserver.com. Want to mention three things you should watch this weekend we haven't talked about yet. Matt Cardona, Adam Copeland, TNT title. Great match. Great match. And, uh, well, apparently I liked it more than Vinny did. Shibata Danielson and Claudio versus Lance Archer in The Righteous. I thought that was a great uh, collision main event. So two real good matches on collision. The rest of the show was there. I mean, there were things that were absolutely unneeded. But they, they had him on the show. But the main event and the the opener were quite great. And then if you have not seen the main event from Arena Mexico of CMLL versus AEW, that match absolutely ruled. Mm -hmm. And I've heard from people who were there, kind of in the lower area near the ring. And uh, I heard from people that have been everywhere. They've been at, like, WrestleManias and big AEW shows. Johnny Cash New everywhere, Japan. Man. And they said, this was the loudest reaction I ever heard. It mm. didn't even begin to come across on television. And they said the uh, the way the Arena Mexico is, is built is like this bowl, and all of the sound just like cascades down from above. So if you're down in that lower bowl, or I can't even imagine if the, like the wrestlers, Danielson, I'm sure, you know, he was already having the time of his life, but uh, probably the crowd on top of that. Man, it looked like everybody did. Well, I'm sure they did. Shoo. I'm sure they did. What a show. That was really, really fun. Those Friday Night Arena Mexico shows are fun anyway to get that thrown in there. And that crowd, that size crowd, whew. Wednesday, Blue Panther and Brian Danielson one-on-one. -on -one. That's right. Good. Uh, Tom and I up at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, previewing all of WrestleMania weekend. And there's a lot. He's going to talk about the eel match. I'm going to try and watch it before the show. And uh, SmackDown and plenty more. And we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio, Wrestling Observer Live.